What's going on guys? Welcome back to DCS World. Welcome back aboard the Hornet for another tutorial video. In this one we're going to be taking a look at the AGM-88C high-speed anti-radiation missile. Now that's a mouthful. Uh, this missile is also known as the HARM, the AGM-88C HARM. What is an anti-radiation missile though? It is a type of missile that has a seeker head on it that seeks out radar sources or radar emission sources. So for example you have a uh, SAM radar uh, in front of us here we actually have a couple of SA6's set up. The harm will seek out and attempt to destroy the radar sources for those SAM sites. Now this isn't limited to SAM sites it is also useful against early warning radar and C2 type radar systems basically any radar source on the ground you can even fire these against ships but uh, they won't do a whole lot of damage the arms warhead is not very big uh, it is designed to really just mangle the radar station not so much destroy it um, effectively taking it out of commission this missile is one of the primary munitions used in the seed mission suppression of enemy air defenses SEAD uh, and it is one thing that the Hornet excels at because it can carry the AGM-88. Now, as for the missile itself, we have two ways for which we can employ the harm. We have self-protect mode, which is a mode that you use when you really don't know where the SAM site's radar is. And you might get launched on unexpectedly, and then you can fire the missile and turn away, and the arm will attempt to destroy whatever is shooting you such as you know it is a self-protect or self-defense mode we also have a target of opportunity mode in which we can use the harm's own seeker head to look for radar sources and we will take a look at both of those we're gonna start with self-protect mode so as with everything we're coming over here we're getting our master arm on we're getting into air to ground mode we are selecting harm from the SMS page and it defaults to SP for self-protect mode and then that is all we need to do here. Now I have the RWR, a little hard to see from the sun glare, but I have the RWR up on this DDI here and I have it repeated to the HUD. We're going to look at the HUD just because it's a little bit easier to look at. Notice I have a pair of sixes that are overlaying each other right now, but there's also a box around them. The harm and self-protect mode uses data from our own radar warning receiver to provide targeting info for its seeker head. And in this case, it's putting a box around the selected radar emitter, namely this SA6 here. If I pressed the scan slash raid slash FLIR FOV button on my HOTAS. It's tough to see because it's not moving a whole lot, but I can actually cycle through which radar the harm is actually targeting via the data from our RWR. We're just going to leave it there for now, and I'm going to unpause the camera and zoom out. And let's get ourselves in range of the SAM site ahead of us and see if we can't take it out without getting blown out of the sky. All right, that SAM is starting to light us up. It should fire on us uh, sometime soon here. We could launch our missile now, but when you're using self-protect mode because you're not sure where the missile is or where the SAM site is, you want to wait until it actually launches on you and then go defensive. So we're going to do exactly that. And there's a launch, so weapon release button. And we'll fire the second one. There they go. And we're going defensive. And I'm letting a few chaff out as well. And I'm going to fly back this way. That missile should not, hopefully shouldn't hit us. That's the SAM missile itself. Here's the harm. It's a pretty big missile. It 
And in this mode and in target of opportunity mode, it can reach out about 25 to 30 miles is your best bet for range. You can see the SAMs over there. Let's check out our other missile. Okay, it's going at the two separate sites because they both launched on us. Boom. And boom over there. And now if I go back into my cockpit and look at my RWR, those radar signatures have disappeared because those radars have been disabled. That SAM site has now been taken out of action. All right, let's reset real quick, and we're going to try target of opportunity mode. All right, folks, welcome back. We're in a fresh jet with those SAM sites respawned in front of us up there, and we're going to try out the harm again, this time in TOO, target of opportunity mode. So as before, master arm on air to ground mode, we're gonna select the harm, but we're going to select TOO here. And what we're actually looking at here, in fact, let me zoom in on this BDI. We're actually looking at a forward-looking picture of what the HARM missile seeker head actually sees. So it sees those two overlapping SA-6 sites out in front of us. We can filter these targets as well. So let's say there were friendly radars mixed uh, in somewhat near vicinity to hostile radars we can go here to class and what I'll usually do is I'll select hostile and that will actually filter what we see on this page you can also reset it and limit it um, but real basically we are seeing what the harm seeker head actually sees so in this case here what we want to do is let me take a look forward here and pause the camera while we're looking forward we can actually see on the HUD symbology here we have a target box on the ground now this gives you some idea of your range to the target but not a perfect idea of your range to the target the harm in sp and too mode has no concept of its range to the target so it's going to fly a basic loft profile and it is going to dive straight on the target the third mode of the harm that's currently not implemented for us is called pre-briefed or pb mode and in that case, it does have ranging information and will loft up to very high altitudes if it can. And in those configurations, the harm can reach out to almost as far as a JSAO. But for our purposes, again, SP and TOO mode can reach out to about 30 miles. So back to TOO mode. One of the things we have to do here is we need to assign our TDC to the left DDI to the harm display. And then if we use our scan slash raid FOV toggle button on the HOTAS, we can cycle through the harm targets. You can see me switching the targets out in the distance there on the HUD as well as on the harm display. Now, in this uh, particular setup, we can't actually fire the harm yet. We need to hand off this target data to one of the individual missiles by just pressing the cage uncage button like that. We see H off on the HUD, all other seekers disappear from the display, and in this particular setup we can now press weapon release and fire the missile. But we're not going to do that yet because we're not close enough to this radar for it to actually be effective. So I'm going to untarget, go back to just the main TOO mode, and we're going to unpause and fly towards the target, and much like the SP demo a bit earlier, we're going to wait until it probably starts lighting us up. The nice advantage of TOO mode is it gives you some idea of where the radar is. Again, it is not perfect. It does not give you an exact range to the radar, but it does give you a little bit more situational awareness. Anyway, stand by while we approach on this target. Now I have somewhat of a rough idea of how far that target is out. It looks like it's on the coast of the area near Gudauta Airport there. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to select the leftmost target. I'm going to hand off. We're going Mach 1.2 right now at 25,000 feet, so I can probably shoot 
and would probably still hit the target, but I'm going to get a little bit closer. And let's say right about there, I would guesstimate we're about 35 to 40 miles away, doing Mach almost 1.3, so we're going to call Magnum. I'm going to switch targets. And now the radar is already lighting us up. And handoff and Magnum. And I've got more harms on board, but we're not going to worry about those right now. We are going to turn away before those missiles even have a chance to fire on us. So let's check out our harms in flight. So these are going to glide a little bit longer distance since we got a little bit more range out of them because we knew where the SAMs were for the most part. So through the magic of simulation, I'm just going to speed these up. And the harms do glide a fair distance, but they have somewhat of an issue when it comes to their range in that they will lose quite a lot of speed. Right, let's go back to normal time. Check out the second missile. There it goes. And let's watch it impact. Boom. And there's the other impact over there. So once again, that's those two radar stations taken out of commission, and thus taken the SAM site out of commission. So there you go, folks. That's the uh, real basics of using the harm against an enemy SAM site radar. Uh, that's typically your best use case. You're going to be using it against enemy air defense radars and stuff like that as part of the suppression of enemy air defense mission. So pretty easy to use. Uh, I encourage you to get out there and give them a try and practice. And I will see you guys for the next video. Take care.